This is Hiroja Scheib, and I'm here to just give my quick thoughts about the shutdown of Deep.Web. Uh, I know it's not really associated with the Satoshi treasure hunt, but I felt it was important simply because uh, if you're unaware, Deep.Web was one of the like really early uh, websites that not only covered the uh, dark net marketplace, but also covered Bitcoin and it had some really informative, simple, easy to use uh, tutorials about what Bitcoin was, what a wallet was, uh, about CoinJoin, which was a, the ability to tumble your Bitcoins for additional privacy, uh, VPNs, uh, exchanges, and if you are into the, da the dark net marketplaces, uh, reviews, um, editorials, uh, coverage, uh, as well as uh, a list of the dark neck marketplaces that were available and links to them and we'll get back to that aspect of it and uh, what the ratings were like it and, and, and if they were up, down, uh, things of that nature and it was it was very informative, well coverage. Their articles for the most part I did not have too many issues with uh, particularly when they did cover certain aspects of the cryptocurrency space they seem to be more on point and more informed than say a, a coinbase or something like that and the operators of that particular website were two Brazilian citizens one of whom has a dual citizenship with brazil and it seems that's where the deep dot website was located was in brazil and their domain was seized by the FBI. It was a global joint operation with uh, Germany, uh, Netherlands, obviously France, because where one of the guys was arrested, and Brazil. And it's just, it's just sad. I mean, the reason why they were arrested or the charges they're facing is money laundering, and how they got them on money laundering has to do with. The, the links to the sides, they, they actually link directly to the dark net marketplaces. And I guess the, the position of the government is that enables or enhance um, criminal activity, but also uh, they took referrals. So when anyone came to their site, whether it was via the, the clear net or th through Tor, they did have two sites, they had one on the clear net and of course they had one on Tor. Um, they uh took referrals and as a result they were able to you know get kicked back different various cryptocurrencies and obviously that's how they monetize their website now torrent freak freak which is another um very newsworthy informed the website that covers the the space of torrents uh, the different software companies sites uh the different legal cases going on with um both music industry that like RCA I believe is the organization that goes around and sues people and um, the Motion Picture Association the various different websites countries servers policies these are the nature but torrent freak never actually directly links to any of these sites they talk about the sites um, they may even do reviews or talk about what's going on they did a really great uh, story uh, follow about the shutdown and takeover ECTV which was a very popular uh, torrent site for TVs and movies but mostly TVs they get occurred like a few years ago it got taken over and of course other people went to different sites and the admins have started a different site and just covering that you know the, the, the ongoing legal case of Pirate Bay um, things of that nature but they never ever directly linked to any particular site and because that's that's how they got you that's how they get you um, and the other sites do that as well when covering these these subject matters is they never directly link to anything um, one of the more popular websites out there would uh, I want to say websites with subreddits I forgot what the subreddit co was called but it it did a lot of the, the, the links, if you will, to um, various torrents for when certain particular shows, particularly Game of Thrones, uh, came on where you can click on the link and receive the torrent, if you will. Uh, you know, piracy, basically. Um, <clears throat> that, that subreddit eventually got shut down, even though the admins and, and the mods were trying to 
uh, negate or prevent the linkage or whatever, but it was still ongoing and it eventually went away. Same thing with the Darknet Market subreddit. It was a great subreddit that covered the Darknet Marketplace, how-tos, tutorials, uh, a lot of think pieces about the philosophy, about cypherpunk, um, which is something the Deep Dop Web did as well, about protecting your privacy, about the history of cyberpunk, uh, what a PGP is, you know, pretty good policy, or not pretty good privacy, not policy. Well, you know, hey, it is a great, great, a great, pretty good policy to protect your privacy, if you will. Um, that's a tongue twister. And it's just, it's sad. It comes on the heels of, dream, not Dream Market, but uh, Wall Street Market and Valhalla getting shut down, uh, getting seized by the government. Uh, something that a lot of people suspected was particularly with Wall Street Marketplace that it was going to get taken down. There was the, the saga of Alpha Bay, which was one of the big daddies, uh, one of the early dark market sites, um, along with, what's it? Hansa, which which was also taken down, became a honeypot that was uh, taken over by the Dutch police. So when Alpha Base got shut down, and one of the admins from there actually hung himself, um, there's a lot of suspicion around that. Uh, he was arrested, I believe, in the either Thailand or the Philippines. Um, when that got taken over, the Dutch knew that that site was going to get taken down and that people were going to go to Hansa and it became a honeypot to get the various vendors and users. And even to this day, from the very first dark net marketplace, Silk Road, there are still people being arrested for selling um, drugs on that site. Now, I'm sure the clock is ticking on a lot of the uh, statutes of limitations for much of that. I do think that money laundering has a bit longer one than um, drug selling, but the information that the federal government has seized, those servers seized, they're able to compare whatever vendors, the PGP keys, the vendors' names, their, um, how they speak, message, type one another, those type of you know, metadata details and going from each of these sites that they've taken over from Alpha Bay to uh, Wall Street Marketplace to a few others that they have seized uh, through the different um, operations be able to kind of get these vendors and get these um, drug dealers, if you will. And have what you will about the concept of drug dealing and illegality, you know, if you're the principle that people should be able to do whatever they would like to their body as long as it's not harming another person, then this is just outrageous. I think personally for me on that subject, the kind of the caveat is, you know, fentanyl and heroin, like the really obvious self-destructive, even Oxycontin probably should not be something that's so distributed. We have just such archaic and weird laws about drugs. It really is not about the drugs. It really was just policing a certain subset of people. Uh, in the case of the United States, is primarily black people and uh, people of, and brown people in general, but people of a certain political persuasion. Uh, it's been covered at nauseum when you look at these different um, drug laws and when they were initiated and the lawmakers and the and the, the police departments that were formed to go after the war on drugs. Um, now that you know decriminalization is something that's gaining global movement particularly with marijuana. You already have Spain that's decriminalized um, their drug usage and have done so for almost 15 years, I believe. A fairly long time to where they've had some, sus some substantial studies about the effects of their country when it comes to that type of drug usage, how it went down. Same thing with decriminalization here in the States when it came to marijuana. Uh, opiate usage dropped. Uh, marijuana usage in general dropped among the youth. Um, but the, and drinking, drinking dropped. Uh, in 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 all these states that people um, have the ability to accept access um, marijuana. Uh, while medical marijuana has been around, it had so many hurdles to where you couldn't really have a, a really substantial study about the effects. Uh, on a, a, a larger populace. You can do the individual thing where you can say people of this subset, particularly cancer patients, you know, had to improve health. 
had better pain management. Um, individuals that got off of opiates and maybe they had um, started using marijuana instead, their life changes, if you will. Um, you can, there were those type of studies, but now that decolonization has occurred in a, a number of different states, uh, medical, medical marijuana has expanded throughout the states. Uh, you're, you're seeing a shift in the way, I guess you could say, people are self-medicating, um, which goes to the fact that we really don't have a strong healthcare system in this country where people can probably can go and talk to a therapist or go to group therapy and, and address the reasons why they're self-medicating. But since people do self-medicate, it's probably better to be high on weed than alcohol, which has led to all sorts of serious health crises and um, violence and just bad behavior in general, way more associated with alcohol versus marijuana. You're, you're you really, you're not going to find someone who went behind the wheel um, smoking weed and got high and get in a car accident. And if you ever see those type of stories, a lot of them are bullshit because it's, it's like they had marijuana and then they had uh, meth and alcohol in the system. It's always a combination. It's just one of the many drugs that that person took. It's not solely marijuana. But alcohol, even to this day, even with all the initiatives and the um, awareness about you know not drinking and driving, even with the advent of uh, rideshare apps that have reduced uh, drinking and driving, in areas where they're highly uh, highly um, used, um, you, you, it still happens. It still does. Um, but it's just another long case of, I guess you can say, the fact that you know there is a significant crack crackdown on these different marketplaces, these um, avenues of information. Um, I'm assuming the reason why these guys got taken down was, be well, it's because of the referrals, but how specifically the referrals were traced back to them was probably all the other um, marketplaces that the governments have taken down. I guess they now have enough information to pursue, you know, these criminal charges. And I'm sure there's more stuff that's going to come out. I'm hoping these guys themselves were not exactly p participating in the, the drug met marketplace, um, but who knows. Uh, with these things, it's just, it's just sad because it's like an OG site. It's one of the really, when you were in the space, I believe they started in 2012. The earliest information I can find, find is 2013. But I do know that when I came into the space in 2012, this was a great reference point for me personally, particularly about, you know, wallets and um, everyone was talking about Silk Road. And I'm like, what is a Silk Road? What is Tor? Um, what is PGP? I mean, I've heard of it. I've had it, you know, attached to my Thunder Mail, but I, I really didn't really know what it really fundamentally did, per se. I mean, I understood some of the mathematical reasons and why it existed, and you can just click and use, but I didn't really play with it too much until I got into the cryptocurrency space and became more familiar with the different uh, cryptography, um, mathematical principles that underline Bitcoin, and inspirations and just just the history of the space in general i mean bitcoin didn't come out of a, a void or a vacuum it wasn't like satoshi you know snapped his fingers and let there be light and bitcoin existed i mean there were lots of things that happened before bitcoin came into existence um another sad thing is and i, I think some people are kind of celebrating a little bit but not too much they're more like meh this is what happens when you go and mess with the dark web or whatever is the lack of understanding and awareness of how bitcoin got its value yes there is the pizza that everyone kind of jokes about around pizza day that went from you know ten thousand um bitcoin which at today's price let's check the price uh, it might be at six thousand i haven't checked it in a while so dot com uh, close to six thousand, just round it up. Uh, so ten thousand, ten thousand Bitcoin times six thousand dollars USD gives you a sixty million dollar pizza, right? Um, soon after that, Silk Road came into operation after that purchase. Um, 
and that that and cam girls and basically porn was one of the fundamental reasons the driving force of the usage of bitcoin people were using it in commerce people would um you know purchase cam girls time the cam girls sometimes cash out sometimes save their bitcoin um or were able to get paid you know better than normal with the credit cards you know getting chargebacks um harassment or hacks or just not getting paid very well they got paid very well with bitcoin um the dark market price people you know mushrooms uh, weed books there was all sorts of kind of stuff on silk road i know there's a lot of fud or myths if you will about cp which is child porn and guns that that wasn't on the site they did not do that while there were other sites in the web that did those things um <coughs> Silk Road was not one of them, um, and that's how it, it, it gained its traction, it gained its value, it gained its awareness amongst people. It because it was a censorship resistant um, money system where you could be pseudo anonymous. It was decentralized, so it wasn't coming from the government. You didn't have any approval. You'd have to show your ID. Uh, you could, in essence, um, if you know what you're doing or even if you don't know what you're doing uh, spend your Bitcoin and not be too terribly concerned of it coming back to you um, now some of that is particularly if you reuse addresses or you weren't careful with your IP address or uh, well the IP addressing is kind of meh, um, myth mythish if you will about, as far as tracing people um, through the blockchain but Primarily, you know, that's, that's how it gained traction into the, you know, mass adoption everyone talks about. And it's just sad that we're losing the focus about the censor res censorship resistance. And we're still just so focused on speculation and increasing the store value of Bitcoin than the actual um, monetary or um, the full mechanism of Bitcoin about being able to spend Bitcoin. I mean, people do ha have spent Bitcoin and done this and that, but this is a this is a, a monetary system that could really, really do great things. Uh, I keep thinking about the Pineapple Fund, how uh, an anonymous individual gathered their Bitcoin and then was able to give to all these very worthwhile charitable organizations, you know, $55 million USD at the time, of Bitcoin. Now, of course, those charitable organizations, most of them cashed out, uh, and we haven't quite closed the loop on a lot of different sectors in general. I mean, there's still a lot of things that you can obtain and get in Bitcoin, you know, uh, servers, computers, uh, people. Uh, you have to use kind of third party services if you want to pay your regular bills, those types of things are out there. But there's not, uh, there's an increase maybe of tax collection. I know there's a couple states here in the United States that are exploring that option. Uh, you know that a few European countries have individually had like if various ATM machine networks and you can purchase, you know, rail passes, which is rail passes, passes, which is the primary way for most people in Europe because of the, the way their countries are and their their public infrastructure is, that was done is not based around the car uh, it's primarily based around the rail um, get around and I think we've lost sight of some certain fundamentals I mean if we want to be a censorship resistant anything we have to be in there for those that are being censored in the porn industry, the sex industry is being heavily hammered. Um, one of the people I follow on Twitter, Violet Blue, recently was kicked off of Amazon as far as um, her association links to the books that she links to and gets money for when people come to her site and purchase and you know items and things. Um, sex workers are getting kicked out of the banking system and have been consistently in the last few years. Um, we kind of should be doubling down in these areas and be like Bitcoin is the option and not just tell them that Bitcoin is the option, but making it so that it's very fundamentally easy for them um, to use Bitcoin, like dead simple, easy for them and their customers to obtain, gain and utilize to be able to survive. 
um, to live, really. Uh, I mean, there was the whole thing with Backpage, and that's a whole mess in of itself. But I remember one of the um, exchanges, it wasn't the only one, but one of the more useful ones was Paxful would actually con be contacted by people that use Backpage and be able to help them and guide them through the usage of Bitcoin and exchanges and particularly their particular service so that they can get their ads up and they can get paid in and live really because uh, Backpage lost their debit and credit card access and that caused them to eventually um, get in trouble with the government because they were um, using false information for different accounts, accepting cryptocurrencies and that in itself is not a crime, but I guess they weren't paying taxes, and it just, it's just a whole mess. And then there's the whole human trafficking thing, but I they're not being charged as human traffickers, and I'm not really believing the government narrative on that particular subject matter. Not that human trafficking doesn't exist and did not occur on Backpage, but I'm very highly suspicious about what level of knowledge Backpage had and what they were doing and whether or not they were in fact um, altering ads to make it appear that even though it was for, you know, um, human trafficking services that they were actually altering the ads so it'd be not as apparent. That That's the allegation. Um, and that is an ongoing case currently right now but um again you know just pour one out for one of the old g's of the cryptocurrency space and i don't know i was just kind of self-reflecting if you will from where we started to where we are now and some of the things are great you know some of the tech stuff is good you know taproot and storage signature BIPs are being have been proposed into the um, ecosystem. Uh, we still have SegWit, you know. Um, we have Lightning evolving constantly. There's new implementations and services coming on, almost like almost like on the daily, if you will. But there's still some core. I guess you could say philosophical and economic and, and economical things are just not quite there. I don't know why people are excited about ETFs or really fundamentally the full approval of governments, um, which is something we're not going to get. We just we just are not going to get that. And it's a we are in the gray area, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being in the gray area. I just think maybe we shouldn't so emphasize on, you know, like me, like me, like me, you know, kind of things and the fact, I think, what is it, uh, fidelity or one of those emerita trading, one of those marketplaces can allow people to trade Bitcoin now or buy Bitcoin. And I'm like, okay, what are they going to do it? Are they actually going to own the Bitcoin, what, what, you know, what's going on here, how does that really fundamentally add value to Bitcoin beyond the fact that it's just um, raising the store value. I mean, that's nice, that's great, but we need to kind of get past that and get to the rest of the different economic stuff of Bitcoin if you will, what Bitcoin can do and go beyond just store value and just, I don't know, I don't know, focus on a city, focus on a country and just build out. I mean, that's how the Visa card system existed. They went to one city in the state of California and offered this, this crap card, this plastic card to pretty much all the residents. And that's how the Visa networks, you know, started. Um, maybe we need to focus on a city. I don't know if it's San Francisco or Chicago or somewhere where we just focus on a city and make everything payable in Bitcoin. You know, um, the social services, the, you know, the water, energy, all that. The uh, transportation, getting paid in Bitcoin, getting your mortgage paid in Bitcoin, the banks accepting Bitcoin. Just focusing on a particular city and just building out and demonstrating how Bitcoin can become an economic force where you go in a restaurant, childcare, 
paying the, the, the kid to mow the lawn, allowances, just all those different things, gas, just everything, the, the whole entire economic system, there's a Bitcoin option there and um, build out from there. Uh, well, the, again, these are just my thoughts. Um, but I thought it was important because, like I said, you know, Deep Thought Web was, you know, one of the early primers, and I mean, dead easy to understand certain fundamentals about this space that I know Andreas and Anopolis was doing a lot of stuff, but this is just, you know, blog written format you can read and then build from there. And I think it's very important because particularly early on, there were some tut tutorials, but they were just terrible. They assume your, your knowledge level was way higher than it should be. And if you ask questions or didn't fundamentally understand something because it wasn't explained properly to you, or when you try to look up the information, you didn't fundamentally quite understand what was going on, people consider you stupid instead of just like, you kind of have to treat people like they're in kindergarten. And maybe if people, kids can recognize their letters, know what they are, maybe string a few sentences together, and maybe haphazardly, you know, do a few letters and stuff like that. But fundamentally going to kindergarten and even first grade, it's just practicing and going over and even if the kid knows it and making sure they actually truly understand and know and can freehand it and, and, and do their ABCs and instead of having the dotted line, being able to stay, uh, to trace over, they can, f you know, do it clearly and legibly and do it within a little, you know, three line space that, that, that happens and, and just not treat people as they're stupid, but yell five it, make it very, don't assume they know what a DAT file is. Don't assume they understand what their OS and registry or even what type of internet connection they're supposed to have. Um, just toss it out and be like, okay, I'm going to go over some of these things. I'm assuming you don't know any of it. And then from our conversation, I will come to understanding what your level is and go from there as far as the explanation goes. Um, I think we kind of got to that point, but in the very beginning, it just did not exist, and Deep Dot Web was a place for people to go to and, and kind of get the get the basic understanding of things. So that's it. I'm Hiroshi Shive. This is Toshi's Treasure Hunters. Um, like, subscribe. You know what to do. Uh, YouTube's been around for what now? Ten plus, almost fourteen years. Two thousand six, four. Yeah, it's been around a long time, 15. So, you know the deal. Um, and uh, until next time, do the hunt.